you're doing pooled items, number 12. If you're doing presentations, it's 30, which is the parking parking. Jackie. 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 Oh, that's number 12. Okay. Ms. Wagstaff, can you hear me? Yeah. All right. You have three minutes. Okay, again, excuse me for hesitating, but you know, I couldn't get on for a minute. But uh, I'm here to speak on this proposal to float this bond referendum on the taxpayers. Um, I think it's insensitive to not understand that economically people are strapped. You're proposing, the manager is proposing a 3.5% tax increase. For people that actually own property and have to pay taxes, just because you're proposing this tax increase and our property taxes go up doesn't mean that our income is increasing, doesn't mean that anything financial is increasing. So even though I heard the manager say $153 more, we don't know who has $153 to put towards paying more taxes. Now with this bond referendum, this is not free money. This is you going to the bank on the behalf of the Durham taxpayers and act and getting a $200, $200 million loan that has to be paid back by the taxpayers. Not to mention, we should not be floating bonds on general maintenance, annual maintenance obligations that should be in the budget for general maintenance. Roads and street and sidewalks are in the budget for annual maintenance funds. That's money that's got to be there no matter what. That's just like me understanding that every day I'm going to take a bath and I'm not going to call the mortgage company and say, can I refinance the house because I'm going to turn the water on. So I need to re do a refinance to be able to take a bath every day. This is what's happening. And if the, if the city and our elected officials and the staff would stop shifting money around from the annual maintenance budget, into these pet projects that a lot of these council members are behind, maybe we can take care of the projects that need to be taken care of. Now, if you're floating a bond because there's some new capital expenditures, maybe you're going to put some bells and whistles on the sidewalk, a one-time deal, then that's one thing. But for general maintenance, we have a budget for that, a general maintenance budget where sidewalks and streets are included in that. That is money that has to be in the budget every year. We should not. And when you let these obligations get fall into disrepair, just like the housing authority does with public housing, then it does cost more money to upkeep and get these things back on track. But if we stop putting so much money, shifting money around into these pet projects, and I'll say it all day long, participatory budgeting, $2 million. And you don't what's going on with that money that's being appropriated out there because those people don't come back and give reports and I don't know if anybody's keeping up with what they do with those $50,000 grants and you got other projects that y'all are putting money into so put the money where it needs to be going and not keep overburdening these taxpayers in Durham because this is not right and this is not what taxpayers are paying for they're not paying to have to pay more taxes for services that they already pay for so that we're totally against, and y'all need to do more research on this before you float that bond out there on us. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Wagstaff. Um, I'm taking over. Mayor Williams stepped out. Um, I think the next pulled item is number 15. Oh, oh I'm so sorry. Councilmember Cook, go ahead. Great. Thank you. All right. Um, how are you? Great. Um, I I actually just pulled this to highlight it again, and and now that I've heard that comment, I'm I'm glad that I did so. Um, I might get you to add some things, but I was mostly just going to talk about this item. This has been um, because we are increasing the property taxes, or we've we have a budget that is hopefully maybe going to pass that increases the property taxes. I wanted to talk about this separately just to make sure that there was no confusion um, that this bond or these two will go by referendum in front of the voters. They will have to vote on these and they'll get to vote on each of them separately. So they get to choose if 
they want to borrow this money in order to do the parks and recreation piece, and they get to choose if they want to borrow this money to do streets and sidewalks. Um, I do want to ask, and, and maybe a W city manager will be the best person for this because um, of the possibility of this bond, the city is able to use our money that is in the CIP or in our budget for um, construction and other upkeep. We've been able to move some money to projects. This has freed up money to other projects. Could you talk a little bit about what projects we are might be able to see if this bond gets passed because we've been able to free up that mo that money just a, just a brief summary for us I, I defer to our Reese. staff we've also got Christina Roden from the um, oh, budget office either of them probably could could speak to that oh, I can uh, Tim Flora, uh, finance director. So yes, so if we if we were to go with a bond referendum, what it would do, it would free up capacity for um, our CIP programming. And so um, not necessarily free up much programming in the current cycle, um, because that is FY25. So we have, so for streets and sidewalk maintenance, we we do have, uh, there, there are those budgeted projects, but we have other projects in the queue for outlying years. I, I believe like a fire department, um, some additional uh, additional transportation needs. Uh, yes. To the mic. To the mic. Yeah. So yes, as as uh, Director Reardon was saying, um, there will be a discussion at next week's council work session on CIP, which we we will be making a presentation on that very. A topic and we can provide you more information uh, with then. Awesome. Yeah. And, and I look forward to that presentation and, and we've seen the, the proposed budget. So we, we know sort of where they fall. I just wanted to sort of have that be out in the open again, because this is again, going to be, it's going to be something that goes in front of the taxpayers. So I want to make sure that everybody knows what they're voting on and understands the benefits. Um, what, can you just tell us one more time, why is it advantageous to have this money up front, particularly for these two items for the park and recreation development and for the sidewalk and streets why why a bond is the is a is a, something that staff has recommended to us sure so uh using general obligation debt bond debt is the least costly way of financing any major capital project the fact that the city has a triple a credit rating means that we will get the lowest interest rate possible on any debt that we issue to do that. So most of our CIP is debt funded. 90% of all of our CIP projects are funded by debt. The least expensive debt uh, that we can issue is general obligations bonds. And so, um, and where um, we will be saying uh, because of legal requirements uh, and the trend and the, um, what the average cost of a general obligation bond in the state, uh, I think right now is right around 5.45%. Because the city has a AAA credit rating, we are anticipating um, uh, a, an interest rate of somewhere more around like 3.6%. Awesome. Wow, thank you. That is awesome. It's it's it, is, it is really, really awesome. I mean, it really is. Um, and... And then, so we had this on our last agenda item too, and that was a notice period. And now we are actually putting it in front of, we are now approving it to go to the voters in this step, or do we have another step left to go? There's still another step. Okay. So so uh, our first was approving uh, a resolution that allows me to make application to the local government commission. This is the resolution to move forward with a bond referendum and setting uh, and if once that gets approved, then we will also have another meeting where we'll actually, and I think this also announces a public hearing, then I think on June 16th, we will actually be having a public hearing. And so while we are waiting for the public hearing, we are also now currently working on the application for the LGC, and we will then get, uh, you know, approval from them to continue to move forward. Awesome. Great. Thank you for that. Um, and I know that we've talked about it a lot of times, and we have a lot more presentations to go, so I will be brief, but we're talking about investing in our community. We're talking about listening to the concerns of our citizens. Um, yes, uh, safety is a big issue, and these are things that are directly tied to safety, and particularly the development of 
the parks and recreation, having a place for youth to go, having a place for folks to congregate, having things for them to do, particularly over the summer when school is out. Um, this is this is going to be such a boon to our community. Um, again, this is up to the taxpayers if they want it. I'm excited for it to go out to a vote. Um, I'm hopeful that we'll be able to use our excellent credit rating um, to do these projects as cost effectively as possible. So I really appreciate all the work that's gone into this from staff and just wanted to raise it again. Um, you'll hear me talk about it many, many times, but um, I just wanted to raise it again so that folks watching this meeting can hear uh, why, why I personally think that this is a great, great way to go. So thank you so much. That's all. Well, the more you talk about it before we have to stop talking about it, the better. So. We never have to stop talking about it, just staff. Our job for the next several months is to talk about it all oh, the time. Okay, good. My mistake. No, no, no. So, yeah. Council's job is to sell this. Let me okay, just we'll keep talking. Yes. Keep talking. And to talk to so I will be um the folks, especially our liaisons to BPAC, DOST, EAB, uh, and the RAC. Um, any council members who are liaisons there, I will be bothering you a lot to make sure that those commissions and boards really know what's what's up because they're they're going to be huge advocates in our community. Um to, to get these really important amenities uh, passed before the voters. I had just a really quick question. When y'all come next week with, when we talk about CIP, um, could you also provide us, so I know that there's ex expanded capacity. It's imagining a world that, I'm just gonna, I'm so suspicious. It's imagining a different world on November 5th for many reasons, hopefully. Um, and um, so but when y'all presented to us at our retreats, it was imagining the more constrained CIP. And then what's been, what's now is is, is different. So I would just like to see a side by side in one place so that I can see, because I know some dollars moved around just so we can see what's moved where and how. Um, so that's just a request I have for our presentations next week. I will ensure that we collaborate with the budget department and we get, uh, we show that for you. Thank you. I second that comment. Thank you. All right, thank you.